show don't tell today I want to talk about this very important principle in filmmaking show don't tell show don't tell simply means conveying information to your audience through feelings and emotion as opposed to words sound is a crutch before audio recording movies were pure were silent you know silent films and the story had to be told pure visually and the actors had to express the emotion and everything that's going on with their only with their bodies they couldn't talk that's the way it should be audio is supposed to enhance the story not substitute it and I see too many stories nowadays that rely heavily on dialogue to express key moments and key information. Uh, you don't want that. You want to show, don't tell. So how do we do this? One way to do this is to make a silent film. Now I don't mean to make an actual silent film, but omit the dialogue from your story and just from the character's actions can you understand what's happening if you omitted all the dialogue from your story can i watch those visuals and will it still make sense if you do if it does then you have a great story if if it doesn't make sense without dialogue if you need to hear the characters and what they're saying then you my friend have a weak story now, if you're Alan Sorkin and write amazing dialogue, maybe you can overcome that. There's some great uh, writers who are good with dialogue that can overcome that. But for the most part, you want your scenes and your stories to make sense pure visually. So that, that is a great uh, thought exercise for your scripts or your writing is to omit the dialogue and see if it makes sense. Or, and try to write the scene almost as, as if the characters uh, couldn't talk. Another way to stick to the show don't tell mantra is to really think about your character and how it's interacting with the scene. You could reveal a lot of information by the way the characters react to things that's happening and in the scene. You know, in Breaking Bad, they don't tell you how smart Walter White is. They show you by the way he solves problems and he figures out a, a new formula when they're out of supplies. He creates this insane thermal firebomb that destroys like this high security door. He makes a poison out of a bean when they gotta assassinate someone. Show your audience who the character is. Don't tell them. Now, it's going to be impossible to eliminate 100% of your exposition. You're going to have to explain some things to the audience because they have to know things to understand the plot. Uh, it's almost impossible to have a story without any kind of exposition. But you want to limit that as much as you can. So anytime you, you have characters that, that have these whole big paragraphs of of monologue or all right red flag I want you to replace that with behavior and physical action another way to show and not tell is by using props or objects in the story as symbols now this is the hallmark of a true professional uh, when I see a writer who creates symbols uh, out of uh, objects uh, I mean, this is great writing. For example, the movie Jurassic Park, Dr. Hammond's amber-tipped cane. They reference this cane a lot throughout the, throughout early on in the movie. And it's because they're trying to explain to the audience how they clone dinosaurs, all right? Because they found some ancient uh, mosquito in some amber that had blood in its belly and they, it was old dinosaur blood. I mean, it's difficult to explain. They do, they explain it, but they also have this symbol that they show you of this amber with the mosquito and they 
big close-ups of it. So it kind of helps the audience understand a little more by seeing this symbol. Like, I don't know what, but I get it. This mosquito in there and somehow it helps them understand. This is what I mean. Uh, show, don't tell. You're using physical objects to symbolize things. Like um, another example, the movie Titanic, the heart of the ocean. I love this prop. It's such a great, memorable uh, object in a movie. Everybody remembers that. Uh, early on in the movie, it acts as a McCuffin device. Everybody's going after it. Uh, it helps drive the story a little bit, but then it, it becomes a symbol for Rose's love with Jack. And that's why she kept it all those years. And at the end of the movie, she throws it back in the ocean because she's old and she's about to die and she'd rather it, her precious object go back to where it came from than to, to see it go into the hands of these greedy a-holes. That's the hallmark of a great McGovern device. It's, it means everything but nothing at all. Everybody's after it, it's super valuable, but by the end of the movie, it actually doesn't mean anything. And the characters and their journey, that's what's more important. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Using objects. Uh, another, ex another example I want to throw in here, because this one's a great example, is the movie The Patriot. Early on in the movie, uh, Mel Gibson has his, his, his boys murdered by British soldiers. And the ironic thing was that the boy was actually obsessed with soldiers and toy soldiers. He wanted to be a soldier when he grew up. And he had these little metal figurines that he used to play with. You know Mel Gibson, because of his character, he hates war. And he didn't want to fight. But he ends up fighting anyway to avenge his, his fallen son. He wants revenge. And he never talks about it so much in the movie, but you know he does because... He's sitting there and he's melting down all those little toy figurines and he's making bullets out of them. And that's what he uses to shoot down the British. And his last bullet at the end of the movie is used on the guy that killed his son. And all, all this is explained just by those figurines and him melting it down and turning them into bullets. This is excellent writing. Using physical objects to represent something, to symbolize something. Mel Gibson doesn't have to say throughout the movie that I want revenge for my son. He doesn't say anything. He's quiet about it, keeping it hidden, but he's smelting down those bullets and you know what's on his mind, revenge. So using objects to create symbols is a nice way to show and not tell. The last tip I want to leave you with is simple, but any place you can in your script, I want you to replace lines with looks. Replace lines with looks or expressions. So if you have a character who's reacting to something in the scene, instead of just having the character react with a piece of dialogue, just show his expression. You know, have him react with a look or an expression, and that's it. Leave it unsaid. Uh, you know who's a master at this? J.J. Abrams. He'll have these scenes where it's building up to something important, and then he'll reveal it, cuts to the character's expressions and the look, and then boom, he cuts to another scene. So as an audience member, it just has you hooked on the plot because you're like, damn, I want to find out what happens there. So you're going to sit through this new scene and you know, until they cut back. So it's just a great little technique to have less, just overall lessen the verbal garbage in your script. Um, less words, more looks, more expressions. So those are some of the things that you can do to convey information about your plot through emotions as opposed to words. Show, don't tell. That's the mantra and that's how we stick to it. By really honing in on the physical action. How do, these ca how do these characters interact with the world? Replace monologues with behavior and action. Use props and objects in the movie, in the movie to create symbols. Replacing lines with looks and expressions. So, 
That's the video. If you like what you see, smash the buttons, like, subscribe, do all that stuff.